Former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney, thank you so much for coming back on your show. Thank you. Good to be with you. Governor, I wanted to ask you about a topic that's been talked about here in Colorado recently. Uh, Senator McCain made some comments in a phone interview with the Pueblo Chieftain where he talked about reopening the Colorado River Compact. Our, our first question comes from Frank in Broomfield, who uh, asked about saying you lived in an upper river basin uh, state for a couple of years in Utah, and he wants to know, do you think Senator McCain was serious? Uh, Senator McCain has no interest in reopening the compact. Uh, Senator McCain believes, as I do, uh, that, uh, that a compact that's been worked out between the governors and between the states is the right way to go. States are the ones that, uh, that build these kind of understandings. The federal government shouldn't meddle in that, uh, uh, that compact. I think the senator recognizes that way down the road there may be changes and that, that states will come together to reconsider the, uh, the, the setting at that point. But there's no, no reason uh, on the senator's mind to reopen the compact or to insert federal uh, uh, interest. Uh, this, this is a, uh, an issue that's been resolved by the states and it should stay resolved as it has been by the states. We are going to be having the Democratic National Convention here in Denver next week, and a lot of people are already concerned about media bias. Dave writes in about it. Linda in Centennial has a question. She says, there's talk here about a Republican war room to provide rapid response. Can you explain the thinking behind that? And she wants to know, is it even more important because the state of Colorado is so much of a swing state in this election? Well, I think it's really important that, uh, that any time you have uh, one party uh, potentially distorting, uh, or, or uh, dissembling in, in some respects the, uh, the comments that are being made by uh, someone else that, that you can have someone there that says, wait a second, that's not the position of our party, of our nominee, and you can uh, make sure that the truth is being told. And, and it's, it's an important function. I, I know the Democrats will do the same with the Republicans, and that's their right. Uh, I, I certainly hope that I'm one of those that makes it to Denver, uh, that I can be part of the process of talking to folks about what John McCain would do. I think people in Colorado will recognize that uh, in, in dealing with the kind of setting we have today with the energy crisis we have, with the, with the economy uh, challenges that we have, and with the, the national security problems we have, that we need a leader that has the kind of judgment that's been developed over a lifetime of experience that John McCain brings. Leads to the obvious question that Peg Sale has. Are you going to be coming to Denver as the vice presidential nominee or just a surrogate for <laughs> Senator McCain? Uh, no, just becoming as uh, one of the surrogates. Uh, we got a, a good group of folks that uh, that are out there campaigning for Senator McCain. I I expect to be uh, campaigning for the ticket, but not to be part of it. Why not? Uh, there are a lot of good people he can choose from. Uh, he's got a lot of folks he's worked with for a number of years, and uh, uh, I, I'm not expected to be one of those. Uh, uh, if you look for reasons why it shouldn't be me, just talk to my wife. She's got a long list. You talked about the economy, and Sherry Else writes in saying that recently she was laid off from a major company in the Denver area. Her position and about 150 others were outsourced to another country, not state, city, but another country, she writes. And she says she sees this trend occurring more and more in America, and it disturbs her. It's incurring when unemployment, the economy, health care are such major issues in this country. So her question, Governor, is how is Senator McCain going to stop the more and more frequently occurring issue of outsourcing. Well, the key thing is to strengthen our economy and to strengthen the environment here so, so that businesses want to grow in America rather than going offshore. John McCain has proposed lowering the business tax rate so it makes it easier for companies to stay and grow and, and locate in our country. But perhaps one of the most important things we can do for our economy is to finally get off our dependence on foreign oil we send about $2 billion every day out of America into other countries. And if those $2 billion could instead be invested here, in businesses here, why well, you create more jobs. So John McCain's insistence on more drilling offshore, nuclear power plants, and, of course, all the renewable resources, that's the kind of strategy that America needs. Governor, you mentioned the topic of taxes. Martin writes in speaking about all of the needs that are in this country right now as they relate to infrastructure, roads, bridges, and the like. Especially the Republicans are going to be going to St. Paul, the I-35 West Bridge there that collapsed uh, last year. How important is it for Republicans to come up with a way, and how is Senator McCain going to come up with a way to pay for this country's ailing infrastructure? Well, we, of course, do have a gas tax that goes to building our, our infrastructure, and uh, hundreds of billions of dollars go to our infrastructure investment. But one of the things we have to do is make sure the money we're spending in Washington, which is a huge number, is being spent well. And frankly, right now, the waste and duplication and earmarks and pork barrel spending has been a huge burden on our economy. 
and on our ability to, to invest in what really counts, like our infrastructure. And I don't think there's anybody in Washington who has a greater record of opposing uh, pork barrel earmark spending than John McCain. And if you want to see somebody who will stand up to Congress and veto excessive spending bills, that's John McCain. I wanted to segue you to the Olympic Games. I understand you were recently in Beijing. Um, you obviously ran the Games in Salt Lake the last time they were held here in this country. Uh, Brian writes in wanting to know your opinion on the 2008 Games so far, how the organization is going, and maybe more importantly, the impact that it's going to have on the world opinion of the Chinese. Well, you know, the games there were spectacular. Uh, they're well organized. They're highly efficient. The venues are, uh, are, are, are more expansive than I think in the history of the Olympic movement. Um, it was nonetheless uh, uh, a revealing thing to be in an Olympics and to be in a country that's hosting the Olympics. It doesn't have the Bill of Rights or anything like it. Uh, one, one writer pointed out that when people gathered around a, a TV in a street corner to, to watch an Olympic event, that the police came and, and uh, dispersed them because they didn't want crowds together. They were af afraid of demonstrations. Uh, they don't have freedom of the press. They don't have freedom of speech. They don't have freedom of religion. Uh, they certainly don't have the Second Amendment. Uh, they don't have uh, freedom from unlawful search and seizure. It's a, uh, uh, it, it's a place that hosted the games with, uh, w with great aplomb, but where the people couldn't participate in the Olympic experience in a way that they did in Greece and Sydney and, of course, in Salt Lake. How much attention do we really need to pay to what's going on behind the scenes there? Obviously, all of the attention is primarily focused right now on who wins all the medals. You know, I think we should look at, at what's happening around uh, the, the Games. Uh, of course, there are beautiful buildings in China, wonderful uh, uh, historical monuments to look at, and the Games themselves are spectacular because the athletes and their, their character has always transcended politics. But... Uh, to be in a nation of 1.3 billion people where those people do not have the most fundamental rights that we're used to, it's really quite an unusual experience. And, uh, and the games are pointing that out. And the great venues, for instance, where they call it the Olympic Green, a, a massive area between the Olympic venues, you don't have crowds of Chinese citizens because average citizens can't get in. You have to have a ticket to be able to get into an Olympic uh, uh, area. It's a very different setting than what we experienced in, in this country or in other countries that have hosted the Games. Finally, Governor, I wanted to ask you with the convention coming here, what's the message from you to Colorado voters? We're going to be seeing an awful lot of the Democrats in the coming week. Well, my guess is Coloradans are going to have a lot of fun watching uh, presidential politics. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a kind of sport that we participate in uh, with, with great excitement here in this country. Uh, but I think they're going to have to look long and hard at the individuals who are running for president. And I believe in the final analysis, given the kind of challenges that exist in our country, the challenges that Coloradans know uh, all too well, the challenges for the economy and national security and, and for energy, they're going to recognize that uh, Barack Obama is just too untested and inexperienced to lead the country at a time like this. And John McCain, on the other hand, he's had the life experience America needs, and he'll put the country first. Former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney, thank you so much, sir, for coming back on your show. Thanks, Adam. Good to be with you.